All over the world you'll see monuments like this. On most days they blend into the landscape and become another piece of civic sculpture. One day a year we are forced to acknowledge them. These empty tombs take center stage and we remember them. I came across an interesting photo while making this video. This is a picture of the unveiling of the Newfoundland Memorial in Beaumont Hamill in 1925. The last line took me a moment to figure out. Then I realized the article was written in 1940. This got me wondering what happened to these memorials during the Second World War. When the Catholic Holy Roman Emperor Charles V took the town of Wittenberg in 1547, he was asked if he wanted the grave of Martin Luther, that seminal figure of the Protestant Reformation, opened so he could have his remains disinterred and hung from the gallows. Much to his credit, Charles replied, I make war on the living, not on the dead. Luther's resting place was left undisturbed. It seems Adolf Hitler shared this view. This is the Vimy Ridge Memorial in France. The monument was designed by Canadian architect and sculptor Walter Seymour Alward. Work began on the monument in 1925. Eleven years later, on July 26, 1936, it was unveiled by King Edward VIII. Apart from his abdication, his only official ceremony. Of course, in 1940, this was occupied territory, and the Canadian press, probably as propaganda, reported that the Nazis had desecrated the memorial. This was not the case. The monument was unharmed. Hitler issued a command that the memorial remain untouched. He invited the world press to attend on the 2nd of June, 1940, to see the unharmed monument. He posted a special unit of the Waffen-SS to guard the Vimy Ridge Memorial. He particularly liked the Vimy Ridge Memorial. It was a symbol of peace rather than war. There were no cannons or soldiers or other such depictions of combat. Other memorials such as the Australian memorial depicting a digger about to bayonet a German eagle did not fare so well and was destroyed. The photo that inspired this, the Beaumont Hamel Memorial, also remained intact. It is a 74-acre preserved battlefield. It encompasses the grounds over which the Newfoundland Regiment made their unsuccessful attack on the 1st of July, 1916, during the first day of the Battle of the Somme. Hitler may have had respect for the dead, but he had no such respect for the living. These types of memorials, those dedicated to the memory of wars and battles, had existed before the First World War. But what about the graves of the common soldier? It's 1914, and Britain is desperately seeking able-bodied men to fight. The grim reality emerges that the average age of a combatant by war's end would be 18. The youngest authenticated British soldier in World War I, a mere 12-year-old Sidney Lewis, who fought in the Battle of the Somme a haunting symbol of the youth caught up in the horrors of war. At 45, Fabian Ware finds he is too old to join the army. Instead, he leads a mobile unit in the British Red Cross, embarking on a mission that revolutionizes how fallen soldiers are honored. Before the 19th century, soldiers killed in combat were laid to rest in communal graves. Only a selected few leaders or famous heroes were bestowed with the honor of an individually marked war grave. This lack of recognition compels Ware to take action, aiming to honor each fallen soldier.
As casualties mount, Ware's commission registers over 31,000 graves by October 1915 and 50,000 by May 1916, underscoring the magnitude of the task. The Army Department of Graves Registration and Inquiries is created with Ware at its head. Reports of their efforts reach grieving families, leading to numerous inquiries for photographs and information about cemetery locations. Supported by the Red Cross, the Commission begins sending these photographs, providing closure to the bereaved. The tangible memories conveyed through these photographs offer solace to grieving families who hold on to them dearly, knowing their fallen heroes are remembered with dignity. This extraordinary mission spearheaded by Ware and his dedicated team preserves the memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. This was the beginning of the Imperial War Graves Commission, now the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, it was all over, all wrapped up very neatly in an alliteration of numbers. All that was left to do was pick up the pieces and do it all over again. We honor and respect these monuments, but we do these men the worst disservice of all. These men fought a war that was supposed to end all wars. <laughs>